I'm Greg. I'm a sailor, a bagpiper, and an all-around jack-of-all-trades. Getting ready to go out and work on the next project on the boat Slow Air. Looking over my shoulder, you can see the disaster that I have in my workshop, giving me heart palpitations to see how messy my shop is. I'll focus on this right now. <clears throat> so these are all of the doors, drawers, basically all the cabinetry from the boat that was easily removable. You know, in the winter time when the boat is outside and cold and I can't really do a whole lot of varnish work on the boat, I can be down here in the shop and, you know, start getting all of this bright work ticked off, um, you know, as the winter goes by. Uh, thank you for watching this video. I am going to go out and get on the boat and we'll see what we can do to get the engine started that you know hasn't been run for four years. So here's the diesel. You can see that fitting there. There's this interesting crank. I'm not quite sure what you'd ever do with this crank, but you know, it's nice to know that the engine does turn. So the engine turns over. So right now I'm going to suck out all the diesel, suck out all the oil, change the oil filter, and open up the injectors and see if I can get it cranking, pumping fuel, and then see if we can get it started. The downside is I don't have a key to the ignition, so we'll have to figure that one out as we go. Um, I do have a new ignition switch, but maybe I'll just try to jump start it for right now. Found some interesting things out. This is a saltwater cooled engine. Um, here's the water pump. And this line went straight down and connected to that, which is a through hull fitting. Um, so salt water is coming straight in and going straight into the block. Not exactly what I wanted to see. Uh, you know, I always prefer the salt water going into a heat exchanger and fresh water cooling through the engine. Salt water just cooling that fresh water down. But uh, for years and years, a lot of these engines were salt water cooled. Um, right now, I am. I took the fuel filter off, and there's no filter element in there. And I went down to try to find another filter element. They had no idea what it was, so I have now upgraded to a newer Raycor filter um, and bought a couple extra filter cartridges. After running this for a little bit, I'll swap out and put in a new filter cartridge. The uh, exhaust comes off of the back of the engine and it came all the way forward went into a box that was a plastic box right here and then went back out and out through the transom. That little plastic box, which is right there, was a water lock. Oh, prevent water from coming back into the boat through the transom or, you know, preventing a siphon back in at some point. But it sat right here in front of the engine, which completely blocked the drain plug. Um, I don't know which makes it a whole lot harder to change the oil. And since the hose came from the transom all the way back here and the other hose came forward and all the way back here, I'm thinking of just mounting it farther aft. Also looking at the water lines, this tap just goes straight over here and goes right up to the galley sink. And this tap goes up here, loops around, goes all the way back down, and runs all the way forward to the head. You can see the gray hose there. Runs all the way along. Gray hose is way in back there and comes up to that little pump. So those will get replaced. So right now I'm going to drain, you know, install the new fuel pump, I mean fuel filter drain the oil and replace the oil filter.
fuel filter installed. Um, only the outflow to the engine. I haven't put the inflow on yet because I want to use that to pump out the diesel tank. Um, when I dumped the fuel filter, that pile of yuck came out of it, which is very concerning about what's in the diesel tank itself. Also swapped out the oil filter. You can see that there was not much oil in the oil filter. And when I removed that, you know, tank that was part of the exhaust system, it gave me easy access to the drain plug, which was finger tight. And there doesn't appear to be any oil in the engine. So I don't know why they would have left it drained, but it makes it a little easier to change the oil at this point. We'll just tighten this back down again. <coughs> and start adding oil at the top. The dipstick is way back there, which is not incredibly convenient, but not too bad right now. So I'm going to add oil into it and then start pumping out the diesel tank and get some new diesel fuel and see what we can do to get this thing started. Chuck's here with me. Hello. And um, we have put the batteries in the boat, we put the new ignition switch in, new fuel filter, we put fuel in the boat, we've opened the injectors, pumped the fuel through the injectors, so we think we're good to go to try to start the engine. The only issue is the shutoff cable is broken. We think we're pretty sure where it's going onto the engine. <laughs> so, so we're hoping that we can stop the engine uh, if we get it started. So we uh, are going to give it a shot right now and see what happens. I'll leave this running. just going all the way back on the yeah. throttle. Okay. So I see we're, blo we're blowing water. Yep. Oh, let me stop this. Whoa, slippery. Well, it runs. Big plus. One of the, uh, this hose is cracked here and or just not tightened down very much blowing water like crazy and yeah, hose yeah, clamp is toast and it, you know it might make sense to replace that hose clamp and the one on the other end at the same time but that's a uh, that's a big win. Yeah, it's a big win. <laughs> <laughs> okay then, engine runs. Uh, now we move on to 
next project. Well, maybe we'll, you know, clean the engine up and run it a little more, change the oil, change the fuel filters after running it for a bit, but I'm pretty happy at this point. It is Saturday morning. I am about to pressure wash the boat and pressure wash the outside and then clean the engine and clean the bilges. Um, I just feel like I'm running a boatyard here. That is my, the old dinghy that I made years ago. Unfortunately, it's seen better days and we got a good, good life out of it, but I think I'm going to take a sawzall to it, cut it up and take it to the dump. Here's the trailer for my cat boat, which is coming out today. We're going to go for sale late this afternoon. Um, got this boat that I just pressure washed that I use for my fireworks. There's the motorboat over there and then the Bristol. So way too many boats in the yard. Not enough time and hours to work and play on all of them. But anyway, I am about to pressure wash the Bristol right now. So we'll uh, play with that and see what it looks like when it's cleaned up a little bit. pressure washing the boat um, it's amazing it looks so much better clean I did go below and I pressure washed the engine and the bilges and, you know probably think round one of that we'll probably have to do another cleaning of the bilges uh, more with a scrub brush and bilge cleaner to really clean it up so I've noticed that when they delivered the boat she's definitely a little bit down in the bow evidenced by where the puddles are right now so at some point uh, mm, squeegee. dirt back down in the villages but well it is what we're gonna do villages are gonna be needing another cleaning later I knew I was going to be getting a lot of water coming down in here but that's not the end of the world at this point I did discover that the pressure washer took almost all of the um, peeling varnish off of the tow rails and the handrails. So that will make my life a little bit easier when it's time to re-varnish up there. Looking, yep. So definitely had moisture coming in. Well, that's fairly dry. That's good. So, we know that there are some areas that are leaking. Oh yeah, that's, that's all wet there. So that could be coming in 
around that chain plate or it just don't oh, know I see drips coming down so the drips are either where the deck the deck meets the hull that flange and joint or it could be the tow rail or it just could be some of the deck fittings I've seen as caulking out there along the joint for the tow rail which you, just, you can't put caulk on the outside and hope it'll seal a leak I mean, just movement it gets right behind it it gets it just doesn't do anything you really need to pull the hardware off rebed and then put it back down again and be careful that you know you hold the screw at the top and tighten the nut at the bottom because you don't want that screw twisting if the screw twists as you're tightening it up it's breaking the joint and it's you know not sealing properly so again all the deck hardware has to come off and the tow rail has to come off and then everything's got to be cleaned up and rebedded so that's it for today uh, don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoyed what you watched and hit subscribe so that you'll get notifications when the next video comes out helps my channel and keeps you informed of what we're doing here thank you all and we'll see you on the next video